Nice, good, 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 good. Um, if everybody can, um, if you haven't done it, make sure the gentleman outside scans you. Make sure you're in the dark room. tricks from this talk. Um, everybody's got different levels of expertise coming into this, so uh, wherever you're at in the game, we're happy to help. I'm uh, Dr. Shadia Rafage, board certified small animal surgeon. I first graduated from Cornell University in 2006. I then did a one-year general internship at Angel in Boston. After that, I did two one-year surgical internships at Long Island Veterinary Specialist in New York, followed by a three-year residency before I moved out to Las Vegas, which I, where I worked at a specialty hospital there for about nine months. Then I moved to Silicon Valley. I was on call 24-7 for three uh, locations that I managed in Silicon Valley. After about a year of that, I uh, spent a year and a half in LA, part owner of a hospital there, and we converted that hospital from overnight to a multi-specialty facility. And then toward the end of 2019, I started uh, my telehealth platform, Vet Triage. Long list of things we're going to go over today, so lots of useful information. I want to thank PRN for sponsoring this. Uh, they're booth number 330, so visit them after, after this and uh, learn about all the procedure types they have available to them. Massive thank you. It takes a lot to organize this, it's very expensive to organize it, and they're uh, obviously committed to bettering the profession. So, booth 330 for PRN. And another thank you to Dr. Kirk Miller. He literally gave me these slides, and I was pressed for time, and he saved my life with this. So uh, kudos to him. I want to give him, want to give him a shout out as well. Uh, Dr. Miller uh, made all these videos in the, in the, in the uh, talk. So we'll go over some, some basic stuff here. Um, suture type. S suture comes in various sizes and various different materials. Obviously, you're going to, over time, have your favorites for certain body types and for certain or rather body locations at certain patients, right, depending on the case scenario. So many different types of, uh, of suture material that are out there. You have to think of how long do you want the suture to last in the body, depending on how long that, that body type needs to heal. So, so the, your degradation profile, how fast a suture is going to be dissolved, if it is absorbable, the, it depends not only on the suture itself, but also the, the, the conditions of the, of the body cavity that you're, you're um, placing the suture in. And then we, we, most of us think of sutures as being you know, either absorbable, non-absorbable, or um, you can think of it as monofilament, multifilament, just depends. I, I'm not sure I use any multifilament for anything. I'm, I use mono for, for everything, but uh, uh, they're out there and there are definitely people who use them and, and have indications for them. And the, you know, the point of, of this is not bigger is not always better when it comes to suture, right? So um, you want to be able to, 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 be, to have common sense, but really it's experience level decide when is the suture too big, too small, what are you trying to achieve with it? So this is just some general principles regarding, regarding um, how long it takes for any given suture to dissolve in the body. So you've got ones that are more short term, <coughs> one medium range, one more long term. And it all depends on what kind of uh, body system you're working with there, what kind of healing you expect. Okay, just sort of a ba basic background. We're gonna go into our first knot here. You guys have at your tables uh, some equipment, the needle holder, stump forceps, a fake skin prosthetic. So if you wanna open those things up, and uh, you also have suture at the table, I think 2-0, 2-0 size suture, so feel free to grab a pack of suture as well. 
and we'll just we'll get right into it. We'll practice some suture suture knots. Um, for those of you who have never handled these instruments before, most of us will hold the needle holders um, with our with the ring finger. So it's it's thumb and ring finger is how we're going to hold the the needle holders. Some folks do palm it, and so you can keep ring finger in there and then palm it to open and close it. It's more helpful with that technique if you have a larger instrument, these are kind of tiny, but I would probably recommend everybody putting a thumb and ring finger, and that's how you're going to hold, uh, hold these. Also be aware that these needle holders do have, do have scissors attached to them. Some don't, and so I love these types. Uh, some surgeons hate these because they accidentally cut suture and it's annoying. If you're doing continuous pattern, you have to start all over again. Just be aware that there, that there is a, a scissor incorporated with this. And then finally, the, the brown, the, uh, the, the thumb forceps, these are rat tooths. So the, the way these are shaped are intended for tougher tissues. This might be a bit difficult when you're trying to hold uh, needles and thread. Um, brown adsins are a different type. We don't have them here, but they're the ones that have ridges on them, a bit more fine tissue and also for handling these, these uh, materials. So that's what you should have at your desk. So, so this is how you're gonna hold these, right? And then this is to grab the prosthetic skin layers as well as your uh, needle and the thread. So we'll, we'll go over a, what a square knot is now, and uh, I'll, it'll make more sense when I show you like pictures and videos. Square knot is the most frequently used knot when placing ligatures and sutures. It's a very secure knot, least likely to unravel. It's not great for areas of tension. When we say tension, we mean the, the propensity for skin or any tissue to want to retract. Right? And so when you put those skins together, you want minimal tension. And so this, in areas that, have, uh, that don't have a lot of tension once you close the incision, these are great for, for those areas. If you're, if you're struggling putting the two ends together, this may not be the best suture knot to use. Square knot consists of, of, of two simple throws with the second simple throw in the reverse direction of the first. We'll show you that. Both throws must begin with the needle driver between both strands of suture. Key points, think of it as a circle, stay in the circle. Um, if it helps, watch just the short end of the suture. It has to go side, side to side, start on one side and go to the other back and forth. Well, let, me, let me show you. This is what we're gonna end up with. This is what we're looking to achieve with a square knot. So that's, this is the shape that you want. So when he mentions the circle, this is the circle you're looking at, and, um, and, you, and then you'll start placing square knot over square knot to, to add to it. Most of the time, this is one throw, Usually, when we're closing these incisions, we're looking for three to four throws, typically. But that's what we're gonna end up with. I'm gonna show you the video now, and then we'll practice how to, how to do it. Again, square knot. The very basic fundamentals to suturing is this, is this knot. taking a bite from one end of the incision, going across the incision, going to the other end, and then he's gonna, see that circle he's forming? So then the needle holders go in, grab the, the free end of the suture, and then pull the other direction. And then you do that over and over and over again, usually three or four times, and then you'll cut your suture. We're gonna play the video several times, so don't, don't feel like you have to get it on the first, first go around. And feel free, if you wanna start practicing, go for it. Start that again. I'll always play the video another another uh, two times here, and then I'll walk around and we'll see how you guys are doing. See, and then cut the ends, and then that's your that's your square knot. Play it again. You'll notice a couple of features with these, these sutures. There's some good memory in them, and so you uh, uh, keep that in mind too, as far as handling the suture. 
also, you know, this is a prosthetic, it's not real skin, so there'll be some drag as you pull the suture through. Good, I feel better. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. all right. Okay, yeah. no, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> of course. You're welcome. You're doing okay? Mm -hmm. Nice. Look at those. Beautiful. Good. Okay. So you guys, uh, we feeling okay about, about the square knot? surgeon's knot. Uh, this is um, used in high tension tissues that cannot be properly opposed with a square knot. So we mentioned tension earlier. The square knot does not really provide a lot of tension. The, the surgeon's knot does. The surgeon's knot differs from the square knot due to an extra pass through the first, through the loop of the first throw. Double overhand knot followed by a single overhand. This will make more sense when I show you the picture and video. This extra twist provides more friction. And so, we'll show you now, this is what you're looking for. So you know how prior we did this square knot, right? It was just this segment. Well, now this is basically a run of two square knots here. That's your surgeon's throw. That's this whole thing, the surgeon's throw. Then that's followed up with what we just learned, which is the square knot. And then you'll do three to four total. So a surgeon's knot, and then two or three of the square knots, and that's your, that's your closure. So I'll show you the video now. And this is by far the most common knot I use, like hands down, this is what I'm using the most, is a surgeon's knot, followed by square knots. So here's the video, let's play it several times, see how you guys do. So it starts off the same way, taking a bite some distance away from your incision, taking another bite at the other end, pulling it through. And this time, instead of one loop around, he's gonna do it twice, see that? Twice. And then, clamp that down. Followed by a square knot after that. I'll mention while we're working on this, just to just keep things in mind. These are obviously prosthetics, but if you notice, the prosthetics are not anchored down to the table, right? And with a real patient, that this actually is a good time to practice this. With a real patient, you want to try and be cognizant of where your wrists and your forearms are in relation to that patient's skin. Every time you touch the skin of an animal, you're potentially uh, contaminating your surgical site with bacteria that normally live on the surface of the skin. So the reason why I like that these, that these devices move all over the place is it makes you have to think, okay, how do, I, how do I maneuver my suture, my needle, without making this prosthetic move so much? Because if you, if, you, if you pay attention to that, it's gonna help you in a real scenario by being aware of where your arms are in space. We get so focused on the surgery that we forget, we forget that stuff. So, so keep that in mind, try to place your sutures with minimal to no movement of this entire block, if you can. The other thing I'll mention for you as well, again, it's just things to keep in mind, you'll learn this over time as you do more suturing. You see how Doc here is, is 
taking one pass through. So he places the needle on one side, has it exit the other. What I'd advise doing is get in the habit of, until you do get more confident, instead of, instead of going all the way through, take your first bite, pull the needle out, and then reinsert it back to the incision to come out the, the other end, instead of going all the way through in one pass. So again, these aren't mandatory for today. I want you to learn the knots and the different patterns, but just keep those things in mind, and as you get more skilled at this, be aware of, of these, of these uh, Details. It's going to help you in the in the real life situation. We'll play this again. So instead of instead of taking one bite all the way through like he does, what I advise trying to do is take a bite and then come out the incision with your needle and then reinsert your needle back in the incision at the opposite end to come back out the skin. But again, the focus here is the knots, which one mentioned for you. Let's see how we do with the surgeon's knot. Nice. Yeah, nice. Thank you, brother. Things will feel very well, I think. Thank you. <laughs> Again, are you doing your best? Yeah. Nice. Good, good, good. Nice. Turn one to that good, huh? Oh, by the way, you guys can maybe avoid the, the, the widest um, room in here. That really, I think the one at the end, maybe? Try to avoid the, uh, the, the, the room at the end of this. We'll use it later on. Uh, just try to avoid that. It is not a big deal if you're already, if you're already placed in here. There's always room to suture. But the one, the one at the very end, you guys try and save it for a little bit on. How do you do with the surgeon's knot? Yeah. Yeah, good. From you, no. Okay. Um, um, okay. But, but in theory, so in theory, so the question is, is there every reason not to do surgeon's knot? In theory, you are including more suture material in this knot, right? It is more suture material, which means that, the, that more suture material is going to be in the patient's body that has to be dealt with by the body to try and absorb it. So there is that negative factor to this. Maybe a little bit more time is added, right? It's a bit more. Um, and you are using more suture, so you're, you're you know, using, consuming more materials. But otherwise, for me, I'm, I'm always using the surgeon's knot for my first throw and then square knots thereafter. Um, I have some surgeons that are, especially soft tissue surgeons, they're very particular about using as minimal suture material and knot size as possible, and so they, they will prefer a square knot all the way through, so it just depends on your own preference. Okay, let's go to the next one, simple interrupted. So this is going to be um, a suture pattern here. This maintains tissue position and strength if one portion fails. So if you've ever seen somebody close in a continuous pattern, you can imagine if the continuous pattern breaks at some point, the whole thing falls apart. Whereas if you do a simple interrupted pattern, if one suture fails, you still have the other sutures to count on. Minimal holding power against strength, so against stress. This is not the strongest of closures, um, so it's not really meant for like high tension areas. It does take more time, and it also requires more suture because you're going, you're going bit by bit. But basically, the same knots you just did, the surgeon's throw and then the square knot, you're doing this, but you're just doing it repeatedly. And that's a simple interrupted pattern. So a lot of you have already been doing this anyway through practicing these knots, but I just wanted to let you be aware of, you can actually close the entire incision by placing these knots side by side. And, and when you're you know, going through vet school and you learn for the first time, most clinicians, professors, will only let their students do interrupted and not continuous because if one suture fails, at least you have the other sutures to, to uh, hopefully keep that incision together. So Doc is doing a, 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 a surgeon's throw now. Okay, he went with the square knot. So square knot, boom. And then once he, once he finishes this, he'll do another one. And that's the simple interrupted pattern. So this we use you can use for any viscera, so you can use it for, um, uh, for small intestine, for anaerobomy, you can use it for stomach, you can use it for bladder. Most of us, if we get more experienced, we do continuous on those, on those organs. But as far as your concerns go, most often these are done for uh, fascia and subcuticular and especially the skin layer. So you'll just do multiple of these.
how far apart you place these depends. Depends on the on the material, the body, where you're putting in the body. So small intestine, you want to be fairly close together. Like you want a tight seal. Um, for skin, maybe a couple millimeters apart is fine. But you'll use your judgment. You know, you place all your interrupters, and you'll say, okay, you know what? Uh, I don't like this gap here. Let me put another one or two in here. And so you sort of fill in the blanks as needed. about simple interrupteds or surgeon's knots or uh, square knots. I think everybody's, everybody's got it down, it looks like. Yeah. yeah. For surgeons, you mentioned which one of those happens last and what creates the impact. So the question is, um, uh, I mentioned three to four throws after a surgeon's knot, and uh, you mentioned in school, they had mentioned six. It depends, yes. So um, I, that's also in, in our surgery board as well, same thing. So most of us, have, we're experienced with suture, uh, not and, and not security, three to four is sufficient. In areas of the body that either I'm really worried about it, maybe the area was inherently infected or I'm worried about leftover cancer cells, I may go more, I may go five to six. Yeah, it depends. They also will, it also depends on what suture material you're using because some degrade much faster and so the surgeons feel better placing more sutures. Um, but uh, I, I, I usually only place that many if I'm worried about the friability of the tissue for whatever reason bad anatomic location, infection, cancer uh, uh, left behind, then I'll place more knots. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the problem when you start placing more knots, although you say, well, more knots should be better, you do lose the benefit with every knot you add, and also you are making a bulkier knot. And if you're looking for something that's pretty flush, so let's say you're placing five or six knots uh, underneath, the, underneath the skin layer here, you can imagine when you start closing the skin, you're gonna have like a bulge there because of all the, the knot thickness. Okay, next one, I'm gonna get a bit more complex here. The cruciate pattern, super useful uh, suture pattern here. Two simple interrupted sutures parallel to each other and they make an X. It's appositional, meaning that we're opposing the two ends of the incision. This is in comparison to inverting, where, you're, where you want the two edges of the skin to invert on each other. There are indications for that, like with stomach or the urinary bladder, but for skin, we want appositional to up have them oppose nice and flat. So this is, a, this is a, good, a good pattern for that. Good for lower and moderate tension and the security is similar to simple interrupted, but it's faster. So the good thing about cruciate pattern is that it is much faster. The bad thing about them, it takes way more suture material that you're gonna use up. So this is a cruciate pattern. This is how you end up with an X. You're, gonna, you're going to take a bite along your incision there, go to the other side, then come back around, take another bite, come out the other side. So, so both your, your bites here are parallel to each other, and then you tie in in a, in a knot. And you're gonna tie in a knot with a surgeon's knot and then with a square knot. Here is a video showing the cruciate pattern. This is great for those, those animals that you're trying to get off the table very quickly. Um, skin staples are even faster, but for our purposes, cruciate pattern is so fast. Um, and it allows you to cover more ground with one with one suture knot too, because it's the X pattern lets you uh, basically in one knot you're you're replacing two simple interrupteds. Let's say you're removing a, a skin tumor from a dog over the sternal area, and the dogs are going to put a lot of pressure on their sternum. This is great for that because you're going to have tension there from the, the way the, their chest is concave and they're going to put pressure on your incision just from you know, walking around the house and laying down. So a cruciate pattern is a nice way of, of giving extra, extra um, support because it does help with tension and uh, yeah, it's, it's great for that.
And hopefully you can feel, it's hard with the prosthetics, but when you, when you tie a knot down for a cruciate pattern, hopefully you can feel how strong it is in terms of like knot security versus the, the ones we, we did previously. It's, it's, it's more obvious on real skin, of course, because you have that, that texture there, but uh, it's good stuff. So we just did, we did square knot, we did surgeon knot, uh, we did stem films erupted, now an cruciate, and now horizontal mattress. So again, I'll just read this and it'll make way more sense when we go over the pictures in the video. I use this a lot, and especially for knee surgery. The horizontal mattress pattern starts by creating a simple interrupted pattern, but instead of tying the suture, the needle is inserted six to eight millimeters laterally on the same side as the needle exited. It crosses to the other side of the incision to exit directly across six to eight millimeters lateral to the first site of entry in the skin. The suture ends, which should both be on the same side of the incision, are then knotted. This is good for tension, absolutely. It's useful in skin, but may cause eversion. So eversion is usually not desired. There's rare times where maybe you want some eversion, but usually you don't want it. Eversion is where the, instead of the two edges being opposed or inverting, it's the opposite. It's, it's everting, it's popping up. And the reason why you don't like that is because the part that's popping up is the internal tissues that are gonna get desiccated because now they're exposed to the environment. They're gonna dry up, it's gonna form scabs, it, it's just, so it hurts the cosmetics of the incision, it takes longer for the incision to heal, because they have to form a scab, and the scab exfoliates, and it forms a new scab. And if you have eversion in like the intestinal tract, for example, you're more likely to get things like adhesions from happening. So, it, it, so it, adhesions are, are when, when parts of the body are, are sticking to other parts of the body, usually from scar tissue. So, so you'd like to avoid eversion in all cases. And uh, so with, with a horizontal mattress, it will cause some puckering up, some eversion. So let, let's go over the, the picture here. You're inserting the needle on one side of the incision, coming across, and then looping, going back the other way. And then you're, you're tying your knot on, on this side of the incision. So cross, loop around, and come back through the other way, and then tying it. And hopefully you, you're able to feel the tension that this, that this suture pattern creates. Because it's gonna pull over, it's gonna pull the side of the incision opposite your knot towards the knot. It's gonna pull it forward. So take a bite. Come through the other side. And then on the same side, just reverse the needle and then go back the opposite direction, parallel to where you were. Subcutaneous tissue? Yeah. Yes, yeah. So the question is can you do this in subcutaneous tissue? Mm -hmm. Yes, you could. The reason why you know if, if, if you may find it frustrating in the sub Q is because the sub Q is mostly fat and you may find that your suture pulls through. So this thing creates such strong tension that you might have that problem. Um, and also, most subcutaneous layers, they're they're very mobile. There's not a lot of tension there. You can bring them close together much easier than you can like skin or fascia which have less mobility to them. But yeah, you could, you could. Okay, we'll play, we'll play it again. I'll use it for, for patella luxation to imbricate the joint capsule. I'll use it for um, cruciate tears, same thing for the joint capsule to help keep the joint tight. 
what's on mattress, I use I use a fair amount. I also use it for uh, skin closures that are just like failing me. They're just they keep me hissing. They're in bad areas of the body. They're over your skin over a joint, over the, the skin over a joint. There's gonna be a lot of motion and a lot of pressure points there from the pet just existing at home. So I like I like this pattern to help help with the uh, maintain the strength of the closure. But because of the aversion that you get, um, it could hurt the cosmetics a little bit. So hopefully when you guys are doing this, you're feeling the, the prosthetic on this side of your knot being pulled towards, towards the knot. And that's the idea, it's pulling that skin towards, towards the knot. And then your surgeons throw after that, and then the square knot. Was horizontal mattress. We're going to go a step up here. Vertical mattress. Vertical mattress pattern involves entering the needle eight to ten millimeters from the incision line on one side and then exiting on the other side of the incision at the same distance. Next, the needle is then turned and entered four millimeters from the incision, so about halfway, and exited four millimeters from the incision on the opposite side. You then tie it. This is for tension suture. It's stronger than horizontal and less tendency for eversion could cause microvascular disruption as well. So this is why, this is my main reason why I don't use a suture that much, because I worry about the blood supply disruption, but it's very strong, and it does cause a less eversion. So it opposes the, the tissue ends nicer. So the drawing doesn't make too much sense, the video will help you much, much more, but you're going to take a bite here, and this time I want you to take your bite farther away than, than you were previously. Take this bite, you're gonna come around here, around, then you're going to turn the needle around and take another bite in the same plane, in the same plane as you just went. So take a bite here first, go across, exit, take another bite in front of this, of the exit, go across, and then exit in front of your original, your original placement of the, of the needle. It'll make more sense throughout the video. And same thing, you should feel the tissues coming together because this is gonna, this is gonna, the intent for this is to pull the, pull the edges together. Start farther away than you have been for this one. Come across. Now you're gonna reverse the needle. And instead of what we did before with horizontal, where we went next to it, you're going in front of it. See, it's in the same plane. You're going in front. That's why I want you to start farther out so you have room to do this. And then you're gonna you're going to exit, same plane, same plane, right in front of your original placement. There you go, like that. And then you tie the knot. Surgeons throw, then square. Play it one more time. So you could also use this, I, use, I would use this for, for stifle surgery as well, to get the fascia imbricated, to get the joint capsule imbricated, but I'm, I'm more of a horizontal mattress myself, but this is a very good, very good pattern. I'm gonna play it again, see how you guys are doing.
fences with the bolt or stents, buttons, or tubing. So I, I personally never use stents, buttons, or tubing. Um, the idea there is that if you want to take pressure off of the vasculature with this type of suture pattern, you place stents in there, which helps buttress the pressure. I, I never used it. It's, it. it's probably a YouTube video or any circuit book will show you how to do that. But I, I, I've never, never done it. But you'll see ophthalmologists will use that a lot. Um, and if you're trying to do a difficult skin closure, uh, I've seen plenty of surgeons do it, but I, I've, never, I've never dived into that. Oral hematoma, yeah, yep, you need an oral hematoma as well. Again, I, I only use suture for that as well, but yes, yes. All right. Okay, how are we doing on time? Should we take a break or what's your, you guys are crushing it. I mean, this is, what do you think? You guys want a 10 minute break or do you want to keep going? How do you want to? 2.30 break. 2.30 break. 30 break. Okay. okay, simple continuous. So this starts with a square knot, one diagonal pass and one perpendicular pass over it. If the needle advances above and below the skin, it becomes a running suture, which is not as good. Minimal tension holding, we're good at position. So this is, this is not the type of pattern you're going to use for high tension areas, but it does oppose the skin nicely provides a good seal, fluid and airtight. So when you get more experienced, instead of doing simple interrupted, you'll do simple continuous. And when you get even more experience than that, you can, you can do this on small intestines, for example, where if there's leakage, you're in big trouble, right? And so this is a good one to do once you've mastered these skills, because it does provide a pretty, pretty uh, uh, fluid and airtight seal. If it breaks, you've got a problem, because with, like we mentioned earlier, if the continuous pattern is disrupted at any point during during the suture, the whole thing's gonna unravel. So you have to make sure that you're confident that where you're putting this in the body is gonna hold and that your skills are such that, that this won't fail. So you're starting off with a regular, like simple interrupted kind of thing. So just a, a, a surgeon's throw um, and then a, uh, a square knot. But instead of cutting both ends of the thread, the suture, you're going to take bite and then bite and then bite. And so you're, you're, you're going in a continuous pattern I will show you if you're on video, and then we'll practice it. This is incredibly, incredibly useful. This we use all the time, all the time. Without getting too fancy, this is a very simple, straightforward closure. And I would say graduate to this from simple interrupted, starting by the safest layer, which is probably skin, and then you can always venture into abdominal organs, if you're going that far with this, uh, uh, once, you're, once you feel confident. So you start off with surgeons, then square knot. So he only cuts one side, then he's gonna now run his suture. So we're not cutting the other side. You're going to start again. Take a bite, take a bite. And no more cutting now, right? It's going to be a continuous pattern. Pull, have tension on there. Pull on your, on your, uh, on your thread. And then instead of cutting it, you're going to do it again. And again, and again, and again, until you have the whole incision closed. There you go. Try to keep the distance in between your bites the same with every single one. You know, make it as, as uh, symmetric as possible. And as you're as you're moving along here place tension on this on the suture so that this doesn't become loosey goosey. This thing's gonna become that this becomes loose and you don't realize until you're down here, well you gotta do the whole thing over again now. So maintain the, the tightness as you're moving forward on on, on, the, on this closure.
end this suture, some of you might find it pretty intuitive how to, how to end it. It does, get, it does look a bit weird because you're gonna end with a loop at the end. So, so once, I'm gonna play the video again, and then whenever you're ready, focus on how he ends the, the closure. Beyond, besides the loop being there, everything else about ending this continuous pattern is the same. Surgeons throw, then square knot, square knot, square knot. But it looks a bit intimidating because you've got that loop there. So I'm gonna play the video again. Make sure to maintain tension when you're doing this and that's just not really tight. Otherwise you just lose and you're in trouble. Just <laughs> um, anybody need help uh, ending this, this suture uh, pattern? It's, it's the same as the previous, but the loop time scares people. So you, you guys are okay with that? It looks good from what I was seeing. I use. This is more of a large animal thing or an old school thing, but a lot of small animal vets do use it, but I, I don't use it, so we'll learn it, we'll learn it together. Lord interlocking. It's a modification of simple continuous. Each passage through the tissue is partly locked, linked to the previous passage through a created loop of material. At the end, the needle is reversed, the knot is tied to the loop left in the suture material. It's for good apposition, good stability, However, you use more suture material and it is harder to remove. So, so you gotta weigh the pros and cons of this. So let's, let me show you a picture. So instead of the simple continuous pattern where you're just sort of continuous going through, this is actually entering within the loop. So for example, in this picture here, see how he creates this loop here. For a simple continuous, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't enter here, you would enter out here, right, alongside it. But before interlocking, you're entering within the loop then create that, that interlocking mechanism. So I'll show you on video. A bit more complex once you get it. It is a very strong closure, which is also why it's a pain in the butt to remove. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if one portion of this does fail, then the other, the rest of it can actually still hold together, which is pretty cool, uh, versus simple continuous, which just falls apart on you. Does anybody know if folks ever use this on like small intestines or anything? I doubt they do, but yeah. It, it would probably be way too, tissue too friable for that, I presume. I just want skin. Skin? Yeah. yeah. I've only seen it on skin too. I just, uh, well, I don't want to guess, yeah. Okay, so we'll start off the same way. Surgeons throw, then square knots. Just like simple continuous, right? That's how it's starting off. So you did your, your knots, now you're gonna go back, put your needle through, but this time, instead of going outside the loop like you would with simple continuous, see? He had the loop, he, he went within the loop. Okay. Do 
it again. Okay, and now within the loop, see that? Within the loop. And maintain tension as you go. See how he's pulling on it? Make sure that you're, you're, you're keeping that tension as you go. You need that tension for this to sit tight. Otherwise, it's going to be loose and it's going to look weird on your, on your prosthetic. So I'll just mention a little bit more about placing sutures. So in, in line with this being difficult to remove at the time of the recheck exam, right? You want to be aware of your, of your support staff, whoever's removing sutures, that when you place them in the pet, they have to be removed by somebody, and the more time your staff has to spend with that pet, the more restless that pet gets, the more annoyed your staff gets, it's annoying. So when you think of these patterns, think, okay, is this animal one that I want to have sutures have to remove, or is this dog too aggressive for that, right? Um, is this dog too big for us to remove the suture pattern? Or if I'm going to use uh, external sutures, maybe I should pick one that, like cruciate pattern, where I can I can span a larger a larger distance with that pattern, and therefore have less suture material for my my staff to remove. So just keep these things in mind. Be aware of how annoying it is at the recheck to, to do this. Most pets are amenable to it. You know, it's no problem. It just takes time, but keep that in mind. I will decide whether or not I want to do skin suture or not if the pet is, is fractious versus sweet. You know, Obviously, whatever is best for the healing, of course, that comes first, but all things being equal, choose a pattern that's fair for your staff to remove at the recheck. I'm going to play the video again, and for see if folks want to focus on how to um, end this, this suture pattern. So I'll play, play the video one more time, and we'll see how you guys are doing. Remember, maintain tension as you're doing this. That's the whole that's the whole point of this. Maintain tension as you go. Yeah, yeah, and that's the symmetric, that's nice, yeah. And then 
so we'll, we'll see how to how to end it one more time. There, there was a question about about how to end this thing. So. Two more principles here, and then we'll take, take a break, and we're going to tackle some very difficult knot patterns. Okay, you may not use that often, but it's, it's, it's good to be exposed to them. Packing suture, tacking the subcutaneous tissue layer to the deeper fascial plane used for decreasing or eliminating dead space. Dead space is the space between tissue layers. Usually you want to eliminate dead space because if there's space between tissue layers, it's more prone to having debris, blood, fluid, cells fill up that area, bacteria. You're more likely to get cellulitis and uh, uh, infection, abscess formation, um, seromas form that way, hematomas form that way. So if you're able to, you want to close that space. So this is the first video we'll show about this, and then we'll, we'll, go, we'll go through it. This is the one where you're going to want to use the, um, the incision at the end of the board, the bigger incision. So there's more room there, but take your first bite, just like you normally would. Take another bite, like you normally would. But now instead of going and tying your knot, you are going to take another bite in the actual meat, in the actual incision itself, the deeper layers. And then when you, when you, make, when you take that bite, you then tie your knot. And what that does is it, it, it helps the skin oppose each other by securing it in the middle within the incision. We'll play it again. So it's tough on these because you want more of a gap, but that's why that last that last incision might be the best one because there's there's more room there. So we'll, so we'll replay it. So what I would do with this because because they're doing like a subcuticular pattern here, which we're not going to go over here, but maybe just start off like a simple continuous pattern. So take a bite on one side of the skin, go into the meat, take it by the other side, and tie it. That'll be the easiest way to learn about tacking sutures. doing like a simple continuous pattern, let's say, that intermittently what I would do is I would tack down the subcutaneous tissue, you know, every three or four uh, um, uh, throws and, and, you know, just kind of tack it down along the way. You can do too much tacking, but I find that some pets get really uncomfortable from it because it's a lot of tension. Otherwise, and you don't just kind of overkill, you shouldn't need it that much. So it's just for, for once in a while. There are some major tumor, tu tumor removals that you're going to do that you're tacking everything down because it's a massive area, but um, those pets also are going to be on going on media and things like that.
for the patent appeal to be built in the staff of the case. Yeah. Are there some ones that they do? We're normally using the ABC. Correct. Yeah. 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 Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 For sharks. guys so yes yeah, so it's 2 34 so why don't we come come back uh, in 10 minutes here okay. let's do a 245 yeah. sound good sure okay thank you thank you brother yeah good Yeah. 
yeah, no, we want to secure this acquisitional pattern for the next time. Yeah. Yes.
some ammo kind of even goes crazy. Most don't that bad. Um, so you can just say, all right, if I go back in and run ammo, um, you'll be aware of the fact that when you open up your Linda, that if you just put it here, here, and other part, other part of the Linda, you don't want to actually technically, my intestine or something on the end of the body wall, but otherwise, um, yeah, it's to get for what it is. Breaking down infusion, I don't recommend unless you need to break down infusion to get it performed. Then you do otherwise, don't break it down, it's going to come back in anyway, it's going to make it a mess of it. And then that just sort of screwed up, you're like, I don't even know what I'm tearing apart here. Yeah. So, like you said, if it's bloody, um, causing uh, soft tissue trauma, it's going to come back anyway. So, try and be like, alright, well, this is a mess, so let's see, can I, can I call my intestine on the back and still try to Now, if you get to the point where the dog is getting obstructed because of soft tissue, I mean, then you do have a citation, you know, and you get better than work, so you sign this maybe for a bad number. But an citation is where you need to support the pattern in the small intestinal tract. So you basically purposely create fusion to the entire loop. I probably told you guys that. Sure. Well, I did that for, um, I did that for, um, what's it called? Inception. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I'll do an citation here. Now, some surgeons are strongly against that. Uh, I still think it works really well. For, for, but it's, it's a long surgery. You're going through the entire tract, right. and that same loop thing right. times ten. You got to make sure you're not making the loops too too big, because then organs get herniated through. You don't want to get too tight to cause a blockage. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah
you're not going to listen to me not and not go next to it, you do a thing with it. Yeah. Now, if you're going to do it a not and then do something that doesn't matter and doesn't want to end it, that you do it a not. But having a not and the not left kind of down is good. Because the whole idea behind the not is you're really opening up any edges for things. Because even if I was not next to it, I would just cut those strings.
start again. Anyone know what the laser pointer is? <laughs> it's Ricky's thing. Yeah. sutures. I don't have a video for this one. It's similar to tacking, but I'll explain. The idea here is to, is that the pointer? Nice, thank you. The idea here is to help bring the skin thank you, from one end closer to the other end because you're having difficulty because of tension. So this suture, is, is the first bite is going to be in the deep tissue, not in the skin like we've been doing, underneath the skin, and then it comes out, and you're not going to take a bite at the same level, you're gonna go forward to take a bite, come out, and then tie the knot, and you'll end up with this. And do you see how this, how this is gonna work? So this part has to be forward toward the incision ends because that's what's going to pull the whole skin over to the other side. This is gonna be hard to do in your models, so I'm just explaining it to you so just you're aware it exists. You can try it in your models, but there's not a, there may not be enough thickness there to get this effect, unfortunately. But, just be aware that if you're having problems with tension, and I don't want you to keep like forcing the edges together, it's not good for the tissue, and it's just gonna fail anyway. This is a good way of trying to get a portion of skin to move across the incision to get better opposed to the other side. So this is just showing the end product. This, this is what you should end up with after you tie it. So on this, on this one, you're going to enter the deep tissue like this, okay, come out, okay. take a bite here, come out, tie it. Okay. Yeah. okay, now we're going to go to some sutures that I don't ever use. These are much more difficult, but it'll be fun to kind of test your skill set from what you've learned so far. Some of you may have used this in practice. But uh, I would say the ones we went through are the essentials. Those are your basics you're gonna use for pretty much everything, all right? There's other more, um, more unique niche type sutures, like how to close muscle and fascia and whatever, but those are for specific cases only. Everything else you've learned so far can be applied to everything. So this is the Aberdeen knot. And um, we have this video. And then another video afterwards to try and show you it. So we'll, we'll see what you guys think about it. So you can see that this, this person already started a simple continuous pattern, right? So they're, they're, they're ending it here with this. So maybe on your prosthetic, first start a continuous, simple continuous pattern, and then try, try this knot out. I'm gonna play it again. Notice how this hand, this person is anchoring down that suture. That's what gives you that tension. What, what I've seen happen is when you try to create that loop, you end up losing it because that, that, that one area is not held down to the tension. I'll show you again. So continuous pattern, end up with a loop. This guy, this end goes through the loop. Now they're maintaining tension here. This is the key. Maintain this tension. Okay, you go, you go through the loop and then slide that down. It's like a slip knot. And then you do that repeatedly. Maintaining tension on this side. So start with a continuous pattern. Do a few, do a few runs of that and then, and then try and end it with, uh, with this knot and see what you think. Play it again. Actually, I think there's another video. Yeah, another, another video on the same, same knot. So they already did a, a continuous pattern, and now they're gonna use the Aberdeen knot here. So, maintaining tension here on this side, and then pulling through the loop. There's always tension on this side. See the tension, see how they're pulling it straight, see that? 
that's what get, that's what's going to get you the ability to do this slip knot type of suture. But again. Definitely, definitely this hand, okay. and then, and then, the tension you're placing here is equivalent to to tightening your knots for anything else you've already done. But the, but but if you don't if you don't place tension on this side here, then it's just gonna it's just it's just gonna be very loose for you. You're not gonna understand how to. You're not gonna be able to slip down that that knot. I'll try to help you if I can, but it's not not what I need. So. Oh, you need some hemp, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but we'll just expect behind that. <laughs> it's very uh, difficult to get cadavers. I know. You know. Yeah, well, I've, I've been getting there in 56 years. Oh, wow. I've seen all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yes, sir. So real tissue, be, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't, you know. Right. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. But, I, I mean, yeah. when I was in high school, I was using orange peels to see yeah, right? right? So <laughs> this is, this is right. nice. <laughs> yeah. That's it, this is beautiful. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Okay. Beautiful. Suture material. Does anyone 
else have any other benefits, those of you who have used this, uh, why you would choose this over anything else? I know you had mentioned it buries the knot. So yeah, instead of like, instead of ending with like three, three awkward pieces of paper, you have three classroom groups interrupted during the middle at the end. It's just one. So like you don't, it's so much less bulky. Yeah, less bulky knots. Less suture used, less bulky knots. It's a little faster. It, it looks fast. I mean, these guys are doing it. It seems like it's it's all like hand ties. Yeah. You're not even using an instrument. one more guide before we wrap up here. So this is the next level of difficulty, the modified Millers. Um, lots of surgeons love this knot. I never use it, but it's a very, very secure knot. And we'll use it for uh, a lot of times for pedicles, for vascular pedicles. So we'll go ahead and practice this one. For pedicles? I do transfixation, so I'll, I'll place the suture um, uh, between the, the vessels, let's say, or between the, the, the fascia around the vessels and the vessel itself. Suture on one side, and then wrap it around, suture on the other, and then, and then cut my, and then cut it. I, so you talking about I just did a single suture? Yeah. So I, I switch my order over time, because I, I do both, but I'll do transfixation first. It's more secure, and then I'll do the circumferential as kind of a backup plan in case. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you do that one again? Yes, oh yeah. So like for uterus, for example, like I may just ligate the one artery on one side, ligate the other, and then do a, a, either a circumferential or a transfixation for the body. Depends how big the tissue is. You can see how much security there is in that knot. Say it again.
model five millers, and then I do have the Miller dot to show you next for those who want to try and venture into that one. I'll, uh, I'll go forward to the, the next one. Again, if you guys want to try it, you know, not, not essential, but let's take a look at this, this Miller, Miller's die. Miller's be a success. Yeah, it's much better. Like the road it's a bit easier than the uh, suture with the wide bit. You know, I'll be honest with you, I don't know. Um, because the, the modified millers, from what, what people tell me, they use that for pedicles. Right. So this one, I just, I, yeah, maybe this is the same thing, but I'm not really sure. Does anyone, has anyone used this before in practice? The two of them, when, when even in the video, you can tell how much tension there is in those knots. 
it's, it, it looks like a pretty secure knot. questions so far about any of this that we've, any questions about surgery in general? So that might be uh, now a good time if, if you wanted to, for, for as much time as we want to, kind of practice what you've learned so far. You know, the, the continuous patterns are, are a good way of kind of combining everything that you've learned from the, the surgeon's knot, the square knot, and then whatever continuous pattern you want to practice more of, and then how to end the, end the suture line. Um, and then feel free to, to remember, or I can always go back to the slide for those who want it, the mattress suture patterns, both horizontal and vertical. Those are really useful too. But in my mind, if you can at least master square knot, surgeon's knot, square knot, and then a continuous pattern, that's, that takes care of most things. Yes? Oh, that, that takes care of most, most cases. And then you'll just over time kind of pick and choose what you like and what works in, 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 in certain areas of the body. But, um, feel free to, to practice all of these and see what you guys think. And then again, here is the here is the sacuchia, horizontal, vertical. For those who want to practice more of them. Don't forget the patent sutures too. Back to back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't remember this thing too much for too long. You know, I don't know if it's going to play. Which sounds like Kushia. Kushia pattern, but you want to add. No. There's a theorem that we want to that we can add it as well. Partial. So 
blood thickness. So the, the urinary bladder, my concern is um, that the suture material that's exposed in the lumen can be ignited for crystal formation, bacteria, mastitis, inflammation. And so I really try to not enter the lumen if the urinary bladder is mass, so I go with blood thickness. Now obviously if you're closing this the incident one more, you can't see as much. Right. So you have to go based on feel. Um, which takes time and experience and we all know if you're feeling correctly that you can't see it. Correct. Correct, correct. Right, right, right. Yeah. Now for, for for small intestine, I try not to enter the lumen, but some animal will do it's not a big deal, but I try to go for a thickness. And then some it doesn't really matter. If you're actually from the sterile, so it doesn't really make a difference to you if you go or not. But it's something that's so easy to go for a thickness because it's such a, a thick layer. Instrument, they can just put their hand in there and not have to deal with the cumbersome instrument. 
I will tell you oh yeah, you may be a surgeon, I use that really long instrument and I would need to like go to cottons or whatever. It's like Yeah, yeah, it's like it's worth it, you know. Yeah. Depends how often you do that stuff, you know. I mean the only time that instrument is that long is like 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 deep like liver surgery or like or gallbladder or honestly most often it's thoracic. You know, subtural peritorectomies or lumbarectomies. What's that? Hemoclips. Hemoclips. Like things that break down. Hemoclips are great. Yeah, it depends on what you know, where your eyes are. But yeah, a lot of the surgeons use hand ties and and uh, that way, like the that Aberdeen knot was like a good one for that kind of a. Are there any secure patterns you guys want to see again? Every mastered everything. Yeah, so, so, um, they're, they're, the, the easiest answer is any surgery technique will have like options in there for you. Yeah. However, if you can turn that circle into a spindle shape instead, so the ideal mastery rule is a nice spindle shaped type of, uh, of uh, elliptical uh, incision. Yeah. So if you can actually cut the corners off a little bit of the circle, make it more spindle shaped, then you can avoid having dog ears at the end, and then your incision becomes, you know, your closure becomes a straight line. It's, it may, it's going to be a longer incision, yeah. but you're improving the cosmetics of, of it. Yeah, and probably minimizing tension. So the circle's annoying because A, you get dog ears at the end, and B, the center part is always a, 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 a difficult to close. So if you can make it more of like a spindle shaped, um, otherwise, yeah, otherwise, yeah, there's, there's lots of different flaps you can use to try and reconstruct it to get it. You know, and those are all the surgery books that just kind of, you know, sort of guide it. Yeah, so it works. The right client to understand if you get the shot, they can't afford a surgeon or whatever. It's great uh, practice this stuff, you know. Thanks, guys. See you. Um, so, thank you everybody for joining. Uh, I want to thank again uh, PRN for, for uh, supporting this, this awesome lab. Uh, they're booth 330 in the exhibit hall. So, if you're interested in them, ask some questions and stuff. Uh, Dr. Miller, as always, thank you for your slides. That helped out a lot. And this is my contact information. If anybody wants to get a hold of me, you're welcome to. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Booth 330, PRN.